Okay, the, the challenge here is that we are given certain information and then we have to use that information to derive the IS curve. Now, the information says at the interest rate of 6%, autonomous spending in the economy is 800 and we have a multiplier effect of 5. Now, that information we can then use to calculate the equilibrium income in the goods market. So what we know is at an interest rate of 6%, we have the autonomous spending of 800. But we also know that the equilibrium income equals the multiplier times autonomous spending. So we know the multiplier is 5, autonomous spending is 800, therefore our equilibrium income is 4,000. That is our first point on the IS curve. So if we take this down to 400, 4,000 here, and we say, okay, we know at 6%, the goods market is in equilibrium at the level of output of 4,000. So this point corresponds to this goods market equilibrium position. The information further goes and says, okay, if the interest rate decreases from 6% to 4%, then you will find there's an increase in investment of 200. In other words, what happens is, according to the investment function, as the interest rate drops with 2% from 6 to 4%, there's this increase of 200. You take this to the goods market, and, and what happens in the goods market is that it increases this vertical intercept with 200. And now you have your new demand curve at the interest rate of 4%. Now your autonomous spending is a 1,000. Given the 1,000 times 5 gives you then an income of 5,000 on your output axis. You take that 5,000 down, so you go here, and now you can plot the next point. You say at 4%, my goods market is in equilibrium at the income level of 5,000. This point then corresponds to this point, and you can draw a IS curve, which shows the combination of interest rates and level of output where the goods market is in equilibrium.